Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This is the second video on the dynamic behavior of systems. In this video, we're going to cover date time, first order plus date time, higher order, and multi input, multi output systems. Date time or time delay refers to the time when an input has changed but no change is detected in the output after a certain time you see the change in the output and this time difference is known as date time so date time as represented by theta here refers to for example when you have a pipeline let's say there is a change in the concentration. However, the output does not register any changes, except after a certain time. Only then can we detect any changes in the concentration at the output. Now, this time delay is termed as date time. This is the time domain equation of date time. And this is the Laplace domain equation. In the Laplace domain, the time delay is represented by the exponent of the negative of theta s. So the transfer function is simply e to the minus theta s if it is just pure time delay. For a first order plus date time system, in actual fact, in the real world, it will be represented as 1. But just to imagine it easier in terms of calculating a first order plus date time systems, you can imagine as if we have first a first order system, then a pure time delay. Now, if we have a step change at the input, at the output of the first order system is a first order response and after going through the pure time delay we will have a first order plus date time system response the time delay transfer function as shown earlier is simply e to the minus theta s the transfer function of a first order system is kp over tau s plus 1, which is the standard first order transfer function. And the transfer function of the whole system of a first order plus state time system is therefore just a multiplication of the two, which is what we see here. What does a step response of a first order plus state time systems look like? Well, the equation is very similar to a first order response, except that there is now date time added in to give that time delay. If you look at these two charts, this is where the step change occurred to the input. Now, since there is a time delay of theta is only after we have reached theta that the step response will begin. So it looks exactly like a first order response except now that there's a time delay inside. This is the polynomial approximation for the time delay transfer function. Why do we need this polynomial approximation? Well, in some analysis, especially for the stability analysis, the equation must be in polynomial form. So we cannot have any exponents in the equation. This is why this exponent with the time delay has to be changed to polynomial form. To do this, 
you can use either the first order or the second order Padi approximation, which is shown here. It is up to you which one you want to use. But of course, the second order approximation is more accurate. However, method, the, mathematically, it becomes slightly more complicated. Now, what do you think about date times? Do you think if a process has date time, will it be easier to control or more difficult to control? You can also look at it this way. If our eyes has some time delay in registering what we see, imagine if somebody were to give you a punch in the face and you cannot see that punch coming until after you have felt it. Will that be dangerous or not? So think about it. For higher order systems, we are going to focus on non-interacting systems in series. If you look at this diagram, we have a series of tanks. Well, for an ordinary tank, let's say you have a typical tank here. Of course, this is a first order system and this is the first order response. When it comes to the second tank, if you look at the level, when there is a change in the flow in, of course, there will be a slight sluggishness in the response. The more tanks we have, the tanks at the end will be even more sluggish than the earlier tanks when there is a step change in FO. Now, we can be representing this by having tanks in series tank 1, tank 2, and so on until tank n. So if we want the overall transfer function of hn over fo, it is simply a multiplication of all the transfer functions in series. Now if we look at non-interacting systems in series, the general equation, therefore, is just the multiplication of the first order systems. You have actually seen this in the distillation column model, right? So this is the characteristics of non-interacting systems in series. Those towards the end will be more S-shaped and sluggish. And with increasing capacities, the more sluggish it becomes. This system is actually a multi-capacity process. Although you don't, do not see the mass capacitance, the capacitance is actually in terms of heat. So we have the capacitance of the liquid in the jacket we have the capacitance of the wall of the reactor and we have the capacitance of the liquid in the reactor. So there are three capacitance in series. So the multi-capacity process, non-interacting systems, do not have to be physically a system that we can see in series. It can also be any form of capacitance, whether it's mass or energy. To quickly just show you the nomenclature for block diagrams, this is called a comparator. So a comparator is for adding or subtracting. In this case here, the output E is equal to R minus C. Sometimes a comparator can also be in the form of a circle with an X inside. <clears throat> and the signs can be inside this circle. So there are variations. This is simply called just a block 
where you can multiply it and this is called a pick off pick off point so a pick off point means that this will flow in the same way so this is c this is also c this is also c for multi input multi output systems i'm going to show you an example of a system with two inputs and two outputs the inputs are x1 and x2 and the outputs are y1 and y2 the time domain model is represented by these two equations and the, the Laplace domain equation is represented by these two equations. You can see G11, G12, G21, G22 are the transfer functions. When we derive transfer functions, remember that we set all the other variables that we are not interested in to zero. But it doesn't mean that we are ignoring them. We can get them one by one and represent the total effect in a block diagram. Now, you can see that G11 is actually the transfer function that relates Y1 to X1. G21 is the transfer function that relates Y2 to X1. And G12 is the transfer function that relates Y1 to X2. And G22 is the transfer function that relates Y2 to X2. So this is how you can represent the whole system in the form of block diagrams. So we have come to the end of the second part of the dynamic behavior video. See you in the third part.